Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever and wherever you are listening, this is the Digest This Podcast. And I'm your host, Bethany Cameron. And you're listening to part two of 12 Foods You Need in the Emergency. If you haven't listened to part one, you can go back one week. Last Monday, we released part one of this. So this is part two, and I'm just going over some foods that we all should have in our pantry, in our homes, in an emergency, and they're still pretty relatively healthy, and also just some tips on storage and what to do with them. So I hope you enjoy this bite of knowledge. If you're new to listening, welcome. And if you're a regular listener, welcome back. I so appreciate each and every one of you, and I just love communicating with you via this platform. It's just so great. And it's just another way to really express myself and also just share really useful information that it's really hard to otherwise on other platforms such as Instagram, where people just want something super quick. I think that these types of episodes, whether you're taking a walk, driving in your car, getting ready in the morning or doing dishes, listening while you do something else is really multitasking and you're obtaining valuable information. So on Mondays, we release shorter episodes and on Wednesdays, I release interviews, which are about an hour or so. And I really hope you're enjoying both. So two times a week, I'm just so grateful to connect with you guys and be in your homes and wherever you listen. So without further ado, let's get right into this episode. My husband and I are wanting to do some traveling this summer, but for me, I actually dread traveling. And for anyone who experiences gut issues, keeping your tummy happy and staying regular is always an obstacle when you're out of your own element and routine. There's a few things though that I always take along my trips. Uh, One are just snacks I'm familiar with. So you know what you're eating, what to expect, plus my core group of supplements, including my Seed DSO-1 probiotic. And the cool thing is that Seed's DSO-1 doesn't require refrigeration. So you can easily travel with it in the slim glass travel bottle that comes with your first subscription. I love that there's no synthetic ingredients or fillers and And it's a pre and probiotic all in one, which makes life just so much easier. And not only has every ingredient in their capsule been scientifically tested individually for their safety, dosage, and benefits, the DSO-1 special formulation has been evaluated as a whole. So it's something you know you can trust backed by science. So support your gut this summer with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Go to seed.com slash digest and use code 25digest to get 25% off your first month. That's 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic at seed.com slash digest and use code 25digest. If you've ever wondered about the non-toxic air fryers, shampoos and conditioners, organic undies, and new food products on the market, and even some not available to the public yet, and well, you want to get the inside scoop, then you need to join the 20,000 plus people that are already receiving these updates via my Friday Finds newsletter. I share information that only my subscribers get in their inbox, stuff like non-toxic kitchen appliances, new food finds, product recalls, food news, and even personal care products we all should or should not be using. My Friday Finds newsletter goes out once a week every Friday and has quickly become some of my followers' favorite things to open in their inbox. I've even started to include a recipe in this once-a-week newsletter. This is not published anywhere else and cannot be found on my blog. So if you're not part of the over 20,000 people that are in the know, be sure you're not left out by going to littlesipper.com slash subscribe and enter your email. That's it. It's free. There's no spam. Just helpful, insightful content full of goods, literally. So pause this episode and go to 
L I L S I P P E R dot com slash subscribe. That's L I L S I P P E R dot com slash subscribe. Okay, let's talk about freeze dried for a second, fruits and veggies in particular. So, I love a good crunch and freeze dried foods certainly deliver in that area. And what I love most about freeze dried produce is that they typically don't contain any added sugar, salt, or oils. Unlike dried or dehydrated fruits, like mostly raisins, prunes, even cranberries, they have added sugars and oils, or even if the prunes and raisins have nothing else, like they're just higher in sugar in general. And as opposed to eating like the fresh alternative, the fresh option, I've even seen dried papaya, dried mangoes, dried dragon fruit. But if you can find the freeze dried option, I feel like that's a much better choice. If you're not sure of the difference, the dried, not freeze dried, but the dried has more of a leathery texture. It's hard. It's heavier. Freeze dried, it's very, very light and crunchy. Now you can eat freeze dried fruit without needing to rehydrate them. However, for optimal digestion, I do suggest allowing them to soak in water to obtain moisture because you can easily dehydrate yourself because the freeze dried fruit doesn't soak up water before you eat them. And if they don't do that, then they will eventually soak up the water inside you, resulting in not only dehydration, but also constipation if you're not careful. So if you do prefer the crunch factor and want to eat them without soaking them in water, just be mindful to drink extra water that day. Okay, so beef jerky and beef sticks. I'm pretty sure you guys all have a few on hand and snack on them from time to time. Like again, these foods are dried though. So just keep that in mind. And most of the water is removed from them. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't eat them. That just means to be mindful when you do and drink plenty of water. In fact, I love a good clean beef jerky to snack on these days. So I always keep a good amount of portions around and just rotate them, as I've previously mentioned, just as the months and years pass. And it's just always a good habit to have, making sure you are stocked with protein-rich foods. And if you need some recipe inspo for even a Wednesday night dinner emergency when you haven't gone grocery shopping or need a quick protein meal, what I love doing with meat sticks in particular is chopping them up into little pieces and then placing them in my air fryer and they crisp up just like bacon bits without the pork. So it's perfect to top like a salad if you just throw together a quick salad or if you air fry them again, they are amazing in a potato salad. Trust me on this, you guys. I mean, if you've ever had bacon in a potato salad, then this is a great alternative to pork and just mix it in. It is just, oh, it's so good. Now I just want to go and make that right now. But anyways, get some beef sticks. All right, shelf-stable milk, whether it's real milk or plant-based, listen up. So there's powdered milk, that exists. And I feel like it kind of got a bad rap uh, a long time ago, but in popularity over the past few decades, it has risen to the top again because obviously it's shelf stable. So it's a great item to have in an emergency and you, you don't even have to have power to make it. So if in case like the power is out, you obviously need to refrigerate it after it's made, but let's just say you make it for whatever meal you're eating and then that's it. You can use a shaker cup, just mix the powder with water give it a good shake and you've got milk. You can also use a battery operated milk frother that will do the job as well. Now they have goat milk powder too. So maybe milk isn't your thing. You want to have it, but you just can't tolerate it. They have goat milk powder and that may be a little bit easier to digest. Again, you just want to look at the ingredients. It should just be 
goat milk powder or milk powder. You shouldn't have extra preservatives, extra sugar, all that stuff, right? Okay, so for all my non-dairy peeps, there's also shelf-stable nut milks that are boxed and uh, you can just keep those on hand. So some brands are much better than others when it comes to the ingredient list and preservatives or lack of preservatives. So be sure just to read the ingredients. What you want to look for is just filtered water and then whatever the nut milk is made from and sea salt. Some some add sea salt, some don't. Uh, Some brands add sugar, added oils, and even flavorings. So always check before you buy. A brand um, that I like is Mulk. I'm sure you've heard of them. So they actually came out just recently with some shelf-stable milks, Mulk milk. Another good brand is Elmhurst. They offer shelf-stable unsweetened almond milk, cashew milk, hazelnut milk, walnut milk, and even coconut milk in the cartons. Okay, so here's a fun fact about root vegetables. Now, root vegetables can last much longer than other produce. And the Farmer's Almanac offers this cool hack. If you store your root vegetables upright, buried in sand between 32 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit, they can last up to five months. And if white potatoes you think are, quote, bad for you, think again. When prepared whole with the skins, potatoes are a great source of fiber, folate, and phosphorus, as well as an excellent source of potassium and vitamins B6 and C. And sweet potatoes are excellent sources of vitamin A, packing more than 100% of the recommended daily value per one five-inch sweet potato. Olive oil is another great staple to have on hand in any state. I mean, it's packed with heart-healthy monosaturated fats, which may help lower the risk of heart disease. It's a staple in our home for sure. And if it's also a staple in yours, why not stock up on an extra few bottles and just rotate them out since you're already using them, right? It makes just, it just makes sense. All right, vinegar is another one. I mean, what is oil without vinegar though, right? (laughs) Okay, so obviously it's shelf stable, but it's also incredibly versatile and can be used to kick up the flavor in any dish basically. Plus it's an amazing cleaning agent and can serve more purposes than just one. Let's talk dried herbs and spices for a second. So you probably already have plenty of these on hand, but it's worth noting here because herbs and spices are an important part of just any type of flavor you want to add, especially if you are consuming shelf-stable bland ingredients. Herbs and spices can really help the palate. Not only that, but I also want to just add that it's medicinal, like God forbid, but herbs and spices, they're super medicinal. So if you ever get a cold or flu, you have a good uh, little pantry packed with all the herbs. And then there was even this, there was a study in the NIH. It notes that herbs are a rich source of antioxidants, making them just an excellent addition to any healthy diet. So getting in your antioxidants, getting in your antibacterial, depending on what herb and spice you use, it's just always good to have extras on hand. Last, but certainly not least, is water. So even though this is the last tip, safe water is the number one priority and it must be when it comes to emergency preparedness because adequate water intake each day is essential to maintaining good health. And we can't go more than a few days without water, whereas food, we can stretch, we can stretch it a little longer. Plus, you need water to prepare even your emergency food in many cases. So having clean water is a priority. Now, if you have room, investing in a water tank or barrel is something to consider. But even if you don't have room for that and maybe just you live in an apartment or a flat, having a good, reliable water filter can keep your mind at ease. 
We personally have an AgraTrue water filter and we use it daily for drinking and cooking and it's a reverse osmosis. So it eliminates lead and countless other contaminants commonly found in our tap water. And the best part is that we just fill the tank with our tap water. And in, I would say the last two years, uh, like we just now have needed to change the filter. So for two years straight, we never needed to change the filter and we use a lot of water, you guys. It even says uh, like on the website that the filters can last up to two years. So don't be like, oh my gosh, like it'll let you know when you need to change it. And that's another benefit is that you don't have to guess. It tells you like when you need to change it. This water filter is so thorough. We actually have to add back in the good minerals because it strips the water clean from everything, which I I don't mind at all. I actually have peace of mind knowing it strips everything, good and bad, and can just we could just add minerals back in to our water, which is what we do. So I will go ahead and link both the water filter that we have as well as the drops that we use in today's show notes. So definitely check that out. I hope this episode was insightful and helpful and just made you think a little bit more about preparedness and the future. Again, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I always love to know that you listen to the podcast and love to know your thoughts. And if you haven't done so already, leave a rating and review. Give me some love because that is really the best way you can support the show. And it really goes a long way. And I appreciate all the love and support. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a resonant media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Mike Fry. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.